Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Con Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, like button, subscribe button, you know the deal. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E, always much appreciated. Today, I got two interviews for you with players and I promised you this, these two for a while. Here they are. First up, Washington Safety, Derek Forrest, followed by quarterback Sam Howell. That'll please all you Howellians out there. But I wanted to give you an update on both players. Before I get to those interviews, a couple of things. One, as you know, that the primetime, or excuse me, the Giants rematch will be a primetime game on Sunday night, a week from today. Today is Sunday morning. And so it'll be a Sunday night game. I don't think this is what they would have chosen. I know this is not what they would have chosen. I'll say that. They would have preferred a Saturday game considering the San Francisco 49ers are play a Thursday night this week. So it gives them a couple extra days off before their game on Christmas Eve. And then it means that Washington is playing a Sunday night game followed by a West Coast trip. That's never easy this time of the year, especially. It does take a little bit of time to, to, to get over from like those night games and then a West Co- then you follow with the West Coast trip. Never easy, not impossible, not what they would have drawn up, but it's the situation they're in. So they're going to have to play, as they say, the cards that you are dealt. There's no other choice. It's not impossible to go do it. It's just something where it's like if you give them the, gave them the choice, they would have certainly preferred to play on Saturday. Not the case. Also, I've given you some injury updates earlier this week. I don't really have a whole lot new because there's been nothing that it's been quiet out there from a football standpoint. And so we'll learn more about those as the week gets going this week. What here's what I do know is that, you know, again, Tyler, I told you, I told you Tyler Larson was going to be getting a second opinion this weekend. Certainly doesn't look good for him. So the question then becomes who goes to center? I would guess that Wes Schweitzer goes to center for a couple of reasons. One, he's strong and powerful. One of the things they really liked about Larson, he's a big guy and helped in that run game. And you could see he did a nice job getting to the second level at times. And I think that's where they're going to want Schweitzer to go in there. Schweitzer is a good run blocker, not an experienced center like Nick Martin, but I think he's a stronger a stronger um, run blocker than Martin is. So I think that's where my guess is you would go because it also depends then if Trey Turner is back and healthy at right guard. I was told he'd be fine. I was told there's they feel pretty good about Sam Cosme. So right guard would be taken care of. And if your goal is to get your five, <clears throat> excuse me, your five best players on the field, then it would make sense that Schweitzer would be the guy who goes to center um, again, even though Martin is more experienced, Schweitzer has that power. That I think you'd want to continue the run game. The hard part with Schweitzer is he gets hurt. he does get hurt a lot. So don't be surprised if it ends up Martin is a guy that is, excuse me, if, if Nick Martin is not the guy that is there later on. But for, for Sunday in the rematch, my thing would be to go with Schweitzer. We'll see what they do. And then also we, we'll find out more about Chase Young this week. I have a gut feeling that he's going to play this year, but I'm not going to put money on it because I just, we don't know. And I think there's still some things to, to be determined there. I do know that, you know, again, the ACL is fine. I think the patella tendon was probably more of an issue um, than, than what has been stated. And I think that's kind of slowed the recovery process as much as anything. So we'll see what happens there. But, you know, again, I have some optimism, but I am not dipping into my wall to put money down on, on whether whatever happens, because we don't know. And we'll find out more this week about where it's going to go. Anyway, that's just a brief update from me. So I did want to talk to Derek Forrest first. I'm going to play that interview first. And because I think he's done such a good job being their third safety, and it's given them flexibility on defense to be a little bit more creative with how they handle the back end. And I think if you didn't have the safety depth, the corner depth would have been more exposed because it would have been a bigger deal uh, for what they what they were going to have to use. And it saved them a little bit. Now, if they can get Benjamin St. Juice back this week, I think that really helps them out a lot. But I think the, given the the what how their defense is, that three safety set with Curl and Forrest and the versatility with those two, as well as Bobby McCain to go down and play in the slot, has been a big deal. So I wanted to talk to Forrest about his progress some of the big hits. Now, this interview, just like the Howell one, was taped before the Giants' first game because that was going to be our last access to them 
before they took the week off this past week. So I talked to him then. So it's kind of general. So there's no questions about the Giants game or anything like that. But I do think I did want to give you a sense of Forrest, his physical play, how he can play like that, et cetera. I think you'll like it. It's not on video. Apologize. But that's when you're in the locker room, you're not going to get the video like that to have that kind of one on one. So it makes it tougher. But be, but my the choice is don't play it. If for those who want to see the video, it's either don't, you know, don't run it at all or just run on the podcast. But I want to give you the option here to do that, to to watch it or to listen to it via via um, Empire Media YouTube page. So there you go. And the same is true of Sam Howell. Talk to him the same day. And but I wanted to bring you at least a little bit of insight into what they're thinking and, and Howell's development through his eyes, where it is he feel he's at um, and, and all that. But anyways, first, let's get to my conversation with Washington safety, Derek Forrest. So just kind of want to check in with you and just like your improvement. We've talked a little bit about that, but where do you feel you're at in your improvement? Just playing back there. Um, I definitely feel like um, I'm starting to be a force. Um, I feel like I'm at the point where I'm starting to develop into like the mentality that I have to be a factor in every game. So I'm I'm going out there with the confidence, and I, I know exactly what what the teams are going to do now. And I'm just developing. You know, I feel like it's like you're developing into like a star role. You know, like you know you know what's going to come. You know what your team expects out of you. So I'm just trying to go out there and do exactly what they expect. What's allowing you to get to that point? Preparation. You know, uh, each and every week we come out here, we prepare. You know, my coaches get me ready. They make sure. I know all my keys, what, what I need to read, where my eyes need to be, my assignments, and I try to go out there and execute, man. So preparation is definitely the, and, the key. And along that, when I remember talking to you after the Houston game, that interception, mm-hmm. and that's like, what's the difference on that play for you compared to like if you were out there even earlier in the year, mm-hmm. could you have made that play? Yeah, uh, so that one was an effort play. You know, I knew that the, the ball was going deep. You know, it was a one-on-one shot, and that play was an effort play. But like plays like the Eagles game, like when I made a play in the middle of the field, that that's a film play right there. So Plays like that are, are like plays that I'm going to develop. And what did you see on the film mm-hmm. that helped you on that play? And where did you, how did you play it because of that? Gotcha. Because uh, because I seen on film that he throws a lot of 50 50 balls to the middle of the field. In my mind, I got to go attack that ball like it's mine. And, you know, it's a 50 50 ball. So, you know, anyone has grabs, but you got to go up with the mentality that that ball is yours. The reason I brought up the Houston game, too, though, because someone was telling me that, like, if you, you basically cheated a little bit mm-hmm. to that side based yeah. on the formation. Uh huh. Well, basically, I was just reading the QB, you know. Um, um, they always on, they're going to give you you know they're going to look you off as much as they can but once once the ball is thrown you got to break and you got to you got to have enough effort to get there you know enough speed and you know I got I got that so I was definitely able to make that play. What are some plays that you've made that you're like most proud of? We see the effort mm-hmm. plays. I mean, you're, and I, even on that yeah. play, I remember seeing your head. You put your head down. You just took off. But mm-hmm. like, what are some plays that you've made that maybe mean more to you because of how it came about? Um, plays. I'll say like the ETM play earlier in in, in the season. You know. That was a, that was another effort play. You know, I was nine yards away from him, and I'm closing, and I'm closing hard, man. So that that's a play that just shows, like, man, it's not it's not about where you are or if you're out of position or something. It's your mentality. Once you get out there and you got that mentality that I'm gonna be a dog, I'm gonna do this or that. You know, you go out there and you play hard, and you know everybody sees it. How about the little tackle on Mariota last week? Oh, man, uh, that definitely, that was exciting, man. You know, it took me back to my college days. Really? Man, I'm telling you, it was like, it was crazy because, like, in the first series against uh, Georgia in, in the Peach Bowl, I had a tackle like that. And, you know, it just sets a mentality. It sets a tone, you know, for the game. And I feel like that's what that was. Because, like, like and, and even getting some yards in the play, but even mm-hmm. if he gets yards, yeah. does it still feel pretty? It felt good because... When JB grabbed me and he tapped me, I'm like, all right, man, like, my guys are feeding off this energy, man. So that's why I had to just let them know, like, we're home. Like, this, like, they can get a couple yards, but we're going we gonna to shut it down. Do you know that you, like, because you and Cam Santos, you guys add energy. Do you know mm-hmm. that? Absolutely. Uh, we feed off each other, man. You know, that, that three safety look is like, it's just like, we, we've been we've been prepping this since camp, man. And once we got out there, you know, it was just like, let loose. Let, let's play free. Let's have fun, man. And, you know, and celebrate celebrate for your brothers. Why, why do you guys work together? Well, like what because it's mm-hmm. a skill set too. Yeah. why do you guys have such a good thing um i feel like because we all can do a lot you know we all can do a lot and they can move us around different positions and you know it's just hard for our offense to tell like what, what are we doing you know especially with three safeties on the field at all the time 
how did special teams help you get to this point? Because like even mm-hmm. Brian will talk about that too, and you see other guys, Christian, some other guys, Percy having to do that. How did that help you? It, de- it develops you into the football player that you need to be on the field. Like you, you're going to learn the game. Like special teams is fast, offense, defense is fast, but special teams, I feel like people play more aggressive. They play fast. You know, these guys know that this is their opportunity to get on the field and show what they can do, man. So you got to go out there, you got to play sound, you got to have the fundamentals. It's the fundamentals of football, man, and it allows you to just be coachable. And, you know, you learn until you're you're developing, until in, until your you know your role on the team. Does it give you an extra dose of confidence too when you go out there and you make a play there? Absolutely, man. Um, I don't know, man. I, I it's something about the, the energy on special yeah. teams. It's something. It's something. I feel like really? it's something more serious than offense and defense. Man, really? when you make a play on special teams, it's something like you feel it deep down inside. All the guys are, are feeding off of man. Like when when Revo and them guys make tackles inside the twenty yeah, 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 kickoff, yeah. I am. I'm hyped, like I'm coming off the sideline, like let's go. Really? Like, so man, the energy that that such teams bring, man, it's just different. Because you know it's funny because watching you guys do that three safety look, because like mm-hmm. not a lot of teams do that, and you guys go to four safety yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Too. Yep. Like, do you is it? Do you look at that and say you guys are a unique group? Oh, absolutely. Um, just to have that much depth, you know, and I could just see like the growth. Since, since even last year, man, even with me, like, uh, you know, our young guys are learning faster this year, man. Uh, I'm definitely proud of that. Well, you are one of those young guys. Yes, sir. <laughs> How much, like, if you're, if it's all preparation, or not now, but if it's a lot of preparation, mm-hmm. what are you doing differently to prepare even now? Like, did, and how um, you learn to I'm, I'm getting, so, like, last year I got practice rest, but, you know, it was, like, rotational right. like now i'm getting most of the practice reps so it's easier for me to develop because my my brain is already getting all these looks i'm seeing these formations you know it's like muscle memory and once i get the muscle memory it's not it's not hard for me you know to learn it and then just do repetition on it and are there are there plays too that you can cheat like how often can you cheat on a play now mm-hmm. to help put you in a better position compared to last year oh uh, definitely um like this year i, I can I understand rock concepts a lot, a lot more better than I did last year, man. So it's easier for me to to see what formation and then de- and then see what routes are going to develop off this formation. It's easier for me to to make plays on the ball now. Do you have an example of that route cut where you see the definitely game? um like the Jags game when they did when they did the all go special and I'm knowing that you know I'm on the backside, three's gonna come to me, get ready to make the play. You know, it's just like plays like that where I know exactly what's going to come and I'm already you know in my my head knowing what I got to do you know to get to get this play done so the other thing is how did you not know you were mic'd up last week uh-huh. uh, I, I just I'm, I'm like when I got in the locker room you know everybody be I get in there like I want to say late but I get in there and there be enough guys in there already man so when I got in there I was hyped you know and my shoulder pads was already put up, so I never so put the wire on the pads. Yeah, so the, the, you know, it's like a little block on the back. Oh, okay. But you know, once everything is going, you're not really paying attention. So I didn't know until I'm like, the first quarter, I peeped the lady was recording us, and I'm like, all right, she might just be, you know, getting <laughs> getting content. But then we came out at the halftime. I'm like, all right, this is too specific. She's staring right at us. Who was mic'd up? And it was like, you. <laughs> I'm like, me? And nobody tell me. So, you know, that's just how I... I but I like how you had to talk about because uh-huh. you don't want to be like, yeah. hey, man, you know. Yeah, like, like, that's exactly like, how it did, is. Did people believe that you didn't know? Cause it's no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like they, they knew I didn't know because none of us knew. Like, right, okay. like we we usually announce oh, before the game, but, man, that definitely was funny. I'm like, hold up. They're like, that's a fine. <laughs> how, how much did basketball track help you now? Uh-huh. That background basketball track, how much does that help Definitely, uh, it helps me with relationships, man. You know, because uh, like sports is just about me and people. You know, you're coming from so many different places and you're coming together to be a team, man. So that, it helped me with my relationships, it helped me with my communication, building relationships, developing relationships. And uh, it just helped me uh, in all aspects of, of being an athlete, you know, like playing defense, like guarding men in basketball is just like guarding men in football. You, you really can't use your hands no more, man. You got to stay in front of them. You know, you got to protect them from getting to the, to the goal. You know, the goal is, is, the, is the end zone and now instead of basketball. And then uh, track, it just helped me with my speed, man, and, and my conditioning. Track? Hurdles. Oh, hurdles, really? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was a hurdles guy. So I was always fast and I always could jump, but I wasn't fast enough to run the 100 sprint like i could i could compete but i knew i wasn't winning the 100 so i'm like i'm gonna go win the 110 hurdles come on now i go run the 300 hurdles win that i like watching the sprints though because like, those guys <laughs> no for sure but, but i'll be on the relay teams i'm okay. definitely on the the four by 200 relay four by 100 you know four by 400 whatever they need me on but i definitely was a hurdles guy though that's why i excel last thing too you you do come up in with a lot of pop mm-hmm. you're not a huge huge guy yeah. how do you how do you manage to get that much pop mm-hmm. just from 
I'm telling you, it's a mentality. Like I really, I see myself as a hard hand safety. So when I when I come to make a hit, if you know, if I can get a hard hit off, I'm going to try to get a hard hit off. That's just my mentality, man. It's like it's, it brings a lot of energy when you hit people, you know. And when you hit people hard, and your team can see that, hey, they feeding off of that. And they gonna do the same thing. Thanks, man. Appreciate oh, no it. Thank you. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Derek Forrest. Now I'm going to play my interview with Sam Howell, the Washington uh, rookie quarterback, fifth round pick. A couple things to note about Howell, and I know a lot of people are saying, well, you know, you want to see me on Sam. Well, that's not going to happen, not unless there's some sort of um, injury situation where the other guys are hurt, or if there's a situation where maybe the game's out of hand, or maybe you, maybe you get to the last week and they clinch it, and maybe you play them. That's when you're going to see it. But I do think that he he's going to play a role in the future here. What kind of role? I don't know, but he's certainly a guy that they liked before the draft. I knew before the draft that they liked him, and it wouldn't have shocked me if they had not traded for Carson Wentz, if they would have drafted um, a guy like Powell maybe in the second or third round at worst. So I know that they like him, and I know that they like where he's, how he's developing and what maybe he could do in the, um, this offseason, his development this offseason, and then next summer. So I think he's a guy to watch, right? And I think you know that. What, what happens, I don't know, but I did want to bring you an update from through his eyes and where he feels he's at and some of the things he's working on, et cetera. So here's my conversation with rookie quarterback, Sam Powell. So I just yeah. want to give people like an update as to like where you're at with everything and just, yeah. you know, when we talk a couple, like a month or so ago, was still working on that footwork. Yeah. So where are you at with everything now in terms of your development? Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm in a really good place. Um, you know, it's been... You know, a lot of fun just being able to be active every game and you know being one play away and just going through practice and, and getting some reps with uh with the ones a little bit every now and then when when they let me get in there and i, I feel like i'm in a really good place um really good place mentally uh, i feel like if if i was to go in there i feel really confident in my um, ability to go in there and do well where do you feel different um i, mean, I just think I, I just keep making strides um in, in every aspect of it you know i think my my footwork has you know gotten better um, and, you know, I, I still think there's areas for me to improve, um, but I feel really good about where, I, where I'm at in the offense right now. That's probably going to be true no matter how long you play. No doubt. So yeah. what are some of the areas that, like, were maybe in terms of footwork? Because I think we talked the last time, it's more so about kind of marrying the footwork to the concept To what we're trying play. to do. Yeah. So how are, where do you feel? Because that's a big deal. Yeah, it is, so yeah. And, I've, and, you know, that's something I've been working on a lot, you know, before practice, after practice. Um, and, you know, I feel like I'm in a good place for it. You know, I'm starting to – you know, tie my feet into my brain, and I'm starting to learn more about, you know, what we're really trying to do on offense and, and how my feet can match up to those things. Um, and that's something that you know, I spend a lot of time on. Um, Coach Zamp, uh, he spends a lot of time on with me, and I feel like I've, I've come a long how, way. Is that a difficult thing? Is that, like, a more nuanced thing? Like, how tough is that? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was just a little different than what I was doing in college, okay. is the main thing. Um, so I didn't have a whole lot of experience with it. But, I mean, I've, I really feel like I'm in a really good place with that. Where, give me an example of, like, where are some of the things that we're, where you have to really work to tie it together? Like, what are some of the you know, specific routes or anything like that that, you know? Yeah, it's, like, the main difference is, like, in college, you know, I, I'm basically, you know, depending on the concept. In college, I, I basically took, you know, the same drop for almost a lot of our, uh, most of our pass plays. Um, and here, every play, you know, we, you got to know the exact drop and you got to know, how many hitches the ball should come out to each progression of the throw. Um, so that was a little different for me, but it's something I've worked a lot at, um, and I feel like I'm in a really good place right now, and I feel good about where I'm at. Being active on game days, how mm-hmm. did, how has that helped your development? Because you yeah, you're I still mean, going to be on the sideline. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, I, you know, even when I wasn't active, I was still trying to prepare right. like, like like I was playing, but I just feel like now, you know, I get, I get to get some reps – some of the game plan plays that we're doing, I get reps of those. So, um, not a whole lot, but a, a little bit here and there. Um, so just getting those reps, I think, helps. Um, and I just feel like I have a really good understanding of, you know, why we're calling these plays and what we're trying to get out of those plays. How important is that? That's, that's really important, um, you know, and Scott does a really good job of, of t- Scott and Zab do a really good job of kind of teaching us why we're calling a play and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and so I feel like I'm in a really good place. In terms of like just, you know, just being able to be yourself out there, mm-hmm. is it hard to know where you're, even for you, where you're really at? Because, you know, you're, you're not getting the game action. Yeah. So how do you tell where you're really at with it? Yeah, I mean, I can just feel it. Okay. Um, you know, on the reps that I do get, I feel like I've, you know, I've shown that I've made a lot of improvement. Um, and that I can that I can go out there and play and play. Um, and I just feel it every time I get a rep. I just feel so much more confident. Um, and everything just feels like it's just in a lot better rhythm. 
how many reps are you getting like for a week would you say yeah i mean it usually um like i get like one period during practice um so sometimes i get one period during wednesday practice and one on thursday some weeks it's only thursday it's 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 here and there it, it varies uh week to week so when you get that like are you how much do you go back and analyze what you're doing in those because that's your that's essentially your game action essentially yeah yeah no it really is i mean i gotta maximize those plays and you know i, I, I obviously i watch those plays a lot and try to look at what i could be doing better um then i do all the scout team stuff as well and um i, I really try a lot of this the concepts we're doing on the scout team are, are similar to what we do Right. Um, so I always try to, you know, put it in our terminology and try to tie my feet into those. So I get a lot of work doing that. And I didn't, I didn't get to do the scout team when, um, when I was the okay. third guy. True. Um, so that was, it was Taylor doing all those reps. So that's something that's helped me a lot. You know, I've really tried to take advantage of those and try to play, you know, the scout team like it's a, like it's a real game because, you know, that's sure. that's the reps I get. You yeah, know, you take advantage of what you get. No right? doubt. So sure. do you, what about in terms of mental reps? How do you handle mm-hmm. that? Yeah, I mean, every single play that you know Taylor gets in practice that I'm not in, I'm standing right behind him and going through it mentally um, and making sure I'm, I know where the ball should go and when it, when it should go there. Before a game, are you doing anything differently or more to help? Because, to, again, you're trying to get yeah. ready for a game, but you're also trying to develop too. Yeah, I am. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I'm doing the same thing I was doing when I wasn't active. Okay. Um, and you know, I take my preparation very seriously. Uh, that's part of my game that, you know, I think I do really, a really good job of preparing. Um, and so I, I take that part very seriously. Have you noticed that a lot of fans are anxious to see you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> people are always going to say different things. Um, but I, 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 all I know is, you know, whenever my opportunity comes, I'll be ready for it. How excited are you for your future, too? Because, again, when you come out as a fifth-round pick, I know mm-hmm. these guys liked you a lot before the draft. So, yeah. But you come out there. But where do you feel mentally now compared to even back in the spring? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in a good place. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy here with these guys and with these coaches. Uh, you know, they've done a really good job and put a lot of time into my development. Um, and I feel like I've made a lot of progress. Uh, so I feel I, I, f- I feel good about my future. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of, kind of just taking it one day at a time um, and just trying to control what I can control. Last thing, what have you learned from Taylor and Carson that's mm-hmm. maybe helped you? Yeah, I mean, those guys have been awesome. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun to be around those guys, especially the young guy where they, they really don't have to help me at all, you know, and, and they both do and they, they both – try to teach me things here and there um then just by kind of sitting back and watching and seeing how those guys prepare for games you know because those two are very different guys um yeah. very different guys and so it's kind, of, kind of in between them it almost seems like yeah and it's, it's kind of cool to see you know how, how both of them kind of go about their business um and and how they are around the guys and just how they go about their week because um, they are different guys and they're both really good quarterbacks uh, so there's definitely a lot to learn cool thanks man cool. appreciate yeah. it yeah no problem That's it for this episode. Thanks to Derek Forrest and Sam Howell for joining me. And thank you, as always, for listening. I'll be back on Tuesday morning with another episode, this time with a roundtable session with reporters. I brought on Sam Fortier from the Washington Post, Matthew Paris from the Washington Times, and Pete Haley from NBC Sports Washington. Wanted to give you their perspective on a bunch of topics going on with Washington and their prediction for the final four games. Does this team make the playoffs? We'll get into all of that. So tune in for that Tuesday morning, and I will talk to you next time.